Charlie here from Unbound Athletic. Welcome to our eight-week free pull-up program introduction video where we discuss and talk about some of the elements that you're going to find in our free eight-week pull-up program. Keeping in mind, if you are someone who is looking at developing their first pull-up or you're looking at increasing your max rep pull-ups, this program is designed for all skill levels, regardless of whether you're beginner to advanced. We'll kick off the video by talking about some of the elements of the program and what the basic setups of the sessions are. We'll talk about some key points and then cover the equipment that is required and my overall look at the program itself. First things first, it's free. So there's no harm in trying this out if you are someone who's looking at developing their pull-up. With the way that the structure works, we're looking at two sessions per week over an eight-week period. With some of the exercises in the uh, first session and the second session, there'll be a lot of variety there, so it'll keep you feeling like every session is something different. As course, as you get through the program, you'll notice a familiar theme, so some of the movements will repeat themselves and some of them will change. The first thing we're going to kick off with is week zero of the program. Now, it doesn't make sense about week zero, but this just basically means before you kick off your first session, I want us to find out what our max set of pull-ups are. If we don't have a bodyweight pull-up in us, as far as we don't have the strength required, let's look at doing an assisted variation and trying your best to find the least amount of assistance possible. Whether that's on an assisted pull-up machine or with a multitude of bands, choose something that allows you to get a good idea, something that's measurable and repeatable so that we can do it again in the next phase of the program. From here, we're going to kick into session one and two. Now, being two days a week, this is quite a easy program to build into your crossfit bodybuilding or powerlifting routine that's not going to mess things up two sessions a week is little enough that it won't mess up your entire routine but enough volume and touches on each of the movement that we're going to see some good progression in a short period of time now obviously you've got a understanding of where your pull-up ability is at and this will give us a guide when we come into session one we're going to cover all of session one's works and then we're going to look at session two second just to make things a little bit more clear. So session one begins with scat pull-ups. Scat pull-ups are one of our developmental movements that help give us an understanding of what the shoulder blades do in the pull-up. It's also the muscle group that helps initiate the pull-up and uh, initiate the pull-up initially um, by, you know, by protracting and retracting the shoulder blade, we get a good understanding of how we move the shoulder blade during the movement. And this will help assist the lats, assist the biceps, get our body up to and down from the rig. Coupling that with obviously our main movement, which is going to be either the weighted or assisted pull up, you'll choose a band setting based on our understanding from week zero. And then from there over the next three weeks, we'll look at progressing our rep range down as our sets go up. So week one, you'll do three sets of 10 with the final set being an intensity set. Well, week number two will be four sets of eight. So one extra set, two less reps. And then obviously week three, we'll go five sets of six. With our alternative or accessory movements, we've got the Meadows Row for our secondary movement. Meadows Row, I just find with the grip and the demand on the grip, it looks at help improving specific pull-up strength. Obviously, we're still looking at targeting some of the upper back muscles, the rhomboids, the traps, um, the biceps, but the forearms are going to get more of a workout than some of the other muscle groups in this particular movement. Try avoid using straps uh, if you are conventionally someone who uses straps for a Meadows Row, as this will take away from what we're trying to achieve here. Farmers hold, also looking at developing grip strength. If you can't hold your body weight for 20 seconds, how do I expect you to do 20 seconds worth of pull-ups? Uh, and that will be alternated between that and pinch grip as the weeks go in. Pull-up negatives, just to make sure we're focusing on the eccentric form of the movement, developing more control and stability on the way down. This will help assist more pull-ups when we ask someone who's able to get between 5 to 15 reps. From there, we're going to get to week four, where we're going to do our first pull-up test, where we're going to test just one set of max reps at our body weight. Keeping in mind, you're still getting some touches on some max rep pull-ups, but this is just going to be a weighted variation. From there, we're going to hit from week five to seven, some slight changes in these, this part of the program where we've got scat pull-up plus a pause, and that'll be combined with some reverse flies as an accessory. We've got weighted assisted pull-ups with a slightly different rep scheme, so we're going a bit more aggressive on the overall weight. Sets of five on week one, sets of four on week two, sets of three on week three will be our top set. So you look at building to something more challenging, 
Obviously, if you're on the band looking at reducing back on some of the bands that we did in the starting part of our cycle. But overall, it'll be something that will definitely challenge us from a weighted perspective, especially if we're someone who's only ever done body weight pull-ups. From there, you'll do your secondary sets. So two sets of eight to 10, week one, six to eight, week two, four to six, week three. And then all three of those weeks will finish off with an AMRAP set at body weight or double the resistance that you ended up on on these particular movements. This will be, once again, a good opportunity to make sure that we are getting some improvement on that max pull-up test, but after quite a significant amount of fatigue. When I personally did this, I think one of the weeks in week seven, I was able to bang out 17 reps on the pull-ups, where when I went for my pull-up test, I got to 19 on the actual day. So it was a good idea of where I was at based on how I was feeling. So that'll be pretty much covering off session one. And session one is our primary session. Session two would be more of our auxiliary session, looking at different variations of the pull-up and potentially some different accessory work to help develop some of the muscles surrounding um, our lats to help support us when we are looking at going for that max pull-up test. We've got some rig hang to start off with, more grip strength work, but this one just allows us to focus more specifically on the variation that we're going to train in the actual movement. Supine pull-ups, which is more of our chin-up variation. So obviously palms facing us. This is a great bicep trainer. And in my opinion, one of the best bicep training movements that you can find. I don't know about you, but I can't physically pull up more than I can bicep curl. Specifically from this variation, um, I, I think I've done weighted chin-ups at 25 kilos, which would be something like a 105 kilo weighted bicep curl. I can't do that. Some people probably can, but I can't. So I find this movement super um, super good for the development of your biceps. I don't know if super good is really a word, but this will help carry over for our actual pull-ups when we get back there. Of course, supine pull-ups have a reduced range of motion. For some of us who struggle to even get a body weight pull-up, this might be a way for you to help um, build some confidence in the movement and potentially achieve your first rep. If you look at a pull-up position, versus a supine position, you notice that that already shortens the distance, let alone we're just kind of closing the gap a little bit easier with that close range position. It might actually make you feel really good and you might even achieve your very first pull up in this position. From there, the progression on this particular movement, week one, set of 10, week two, sets of eight, week three, sets of six, and it's plus one set. So it's the same format as our weighted pull ups um, over here, but it's just gonna be the chin up variation. Inverted rows will be uh, one of our first accessory movements. This is similar to a ring row, but it's from a bar on a rack, from a bar on a rack. It's, it's a bar placed on a rack, and we look at rowing in the variation that will be very similar to a ring row. They also know these as Australian pull-ups. These can give us a bit more range of motion to a ring row, and they can be a little bit easier for some of our users to perform, especially if you are more beginner. Um, but it is a great way to help develop the upper back muscles in general. We've got kneeling lat pull downs, and lat pull downs will be on and off week to week. Um, kneeling lat pull downs are a bit more of a core engaging variation of our lat pull down that will imitate more of our hollow position while getting the cable or the machine of choice to our hips. Um, finally, incline dumbbell curls, drag curls, and reverse 21s, just some bicep variations to specifically isolate the biceps to help develop them a little bit more so we're a bit stronger in our pulling movements. From there, there'll be no tests on week four. So you'll do your pull-up test. You'll have a bit of a deload session on that second session. There'll still be some movements there, but it won't be anything too challenging on that week. Then we look at progressing further. Rig hang's still there, probably just longer duration. We've got rope pull-ups, a bit of a different movement. This is just changing our grip from a supine and a um, pronated, so pronated and supine to a mixed grip position. Um, if we don't have a rope, don't stress. We can always change it up for a pull-up attachment that's a neutral grip um, or a set of rings, which will always work as well. If none of them are available, you can always just repeat the supine pull-ups just from a lower rep range. Three sets of three, three sets of four, three sets of five, nothing fancy here. And this will be per side. Just because the lat is lengthened on that top arm and the bicep is shortened on the bottom arm, we want to alternate sides so that both arms get some love. Pull up top holds, this will be our alternative to, no, the um, negatives are on the first day, but this will be the alternative to that negative. Just holding that top pull up top position, developing bicep strength, holding that core in that good stable position. This just trains us to be more stable in the top of the pull up and also puts quite a lot of stress on our body, holding it in that position. This will be combined with barbell roll ups, which is a great forearm and wrist developer 
Once again, developing forearm strength, holding ourselves for longer, bigger forearms mean easier pull-ups. We've got kneeling lat pull-downs again, but we've also got dumbbell rows as an alternative movement this time on that particular one. Just look at isolating that particular movement pattern, getting some extra love for the lats. Um, it is only in, I think, one week, the dumbbell rows. It does come in uh, isolating the lats, getting the biceps bigger, building some more rhomboids um, and some mid to upper trapezius. So it'll be nice. And it's a good mixture to the meadows rows um, as a little bit more variation to the program. Finally, we've got the same kind of uh, bicep exercises as the first week, just probably more sets, a little bit more volume, incline curls, drag curls, 21s. And then this one finishes up with the max rig hang test. So you do get to do something on the second session in that last week. Um, see how long you can dead hang from the rig for. Um, I'm interested to know 90 seconds is a good amount of time. There are people who can dead hang for minutes on end. I think 18 or 19 minutes is the longest I've ever seen. Um, but see how you go on that one. Cool. So that's covering the program itself. Obviously, if you've got any questions that are additional to the program or you're experiencing some difficulty in some certain movements, do be sure to leave a comment down below. We can answer any comments. Prevalent is the word I'm looking for to the program. Um, but here's some key points though. The sessions are obviously two a week, which we've covered a few times. For all ability levels, it's basic and simple, easy to understand. All of these have a video link that you can check out that'll cover each movement individually with a bit of a video guide on how to do it. Then there's gonna be a option to repeat the program. So if you get through the entire program, you see some good results, but let's say you might not quite have a pull-up yet, or maybe you went from one to two strict pull-ups and you want more, just repeat the program in the same sequence. You'll see some progression there. It might be a little bit tedious and mundane, but you'll still see some progression nevertheless. Um, and it's got regular testing. Um, we've got some testing in our AMRAP sets. We've got um, max reps in our weighted reps, max reps in our max sets in our weighted reps. Uh, and then we've also got the two tests at the bottom. You'll feel like you're always being challenged and you're always seeing improvement in small little micro amounts. Um, moving into the equipment needed. So these are the essential things that you will need and we'll talk about some different options if you don't have everything. Obviously a rig is a non-negotiable. If you have a machine that has a pull-up attachment, that'll work, um, especially if it has neutral, um, wide, close, that, the more variations, the better. Bands are a good replacement if we don't have a cable machine for the lap pull downs. Um, so if you have any form of band, that'll work as well. Um, we do also need the bands if you are looking at being assisted, unless you have the assisted pull up attachment. Um, from there, dumbbell or kettlebell will do for rows, farmers holds, farmers carries, etc. Barbell will be mostly for the incline or the incline curls, sorry, the drag curls and the 21s. Um, but if you don't have a dumbbell and you have a barbell, that'll be pretty good as well. Um, and a rope is optional. If you have some form of pull-up attachment that allows for a neutral grip, you have a set of rings that allows you to do ring pull-ups, that'll be a good alternative rather than the rope. But the rope just has a thicker grip, so ideally it would be useful. If we don't have it, it doesn't matter too much. That's going to cover our free eight-week pull-up progression. I'll leave the link in the video description at the bottom so you guys can enjoy that program. If you like the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Us here at Unbound Athletic, thank you for your time watching this video, and I hope you appreciate our program.